Flying Scout is an extremely underrated role in 66, but it's also one of the most important. The role is meant to support the combo players by giving them information on the opposite side of the map, making plays, creating space, and doing any other dirty work. You can often expect to do sub 200 DPM and cap all game long. This might not sound fun, but that's just the reality of your role on the team, so just accept and embrace it. As a flank scout, you're mainly doing stuff with your roamer, but that doesn't mean the rest of your team doesn't exist. This brings me to my first point about playing flank scout, and that is to have effective communication. You will play so much better when you and your teammates communicate with each other and are on the same page. Here are the three W's to remember when effectively communicating with your teammates. Communicate where you are, what you're doing, and when you're available to get in. Take note of this clip right here. I communicate that I'm playing passive and that I'm waiting for Patty to get here so that we can clear cafe together. My team is pushing into mid through valley and Banny calls to me saying that cafe is clear and that I needed to get in to create space for our combo. Sounds like he's trapping our shed. I'm uh, playing cafe passive They're until Patty gets here. Um, Sorry, get to the cafe, Eric. Okay. Traps on the edge of our shed. Got on top of mid. Got on top of mid. On so right, yes, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. On, on, on roof. On roof. This is the type of communication that a flank scout should have with the rest of his teammates. While communication is a key part in doing well on flank scout, another thing that is overlooked is being able to listen carefully. Not listening can lead to mistakes that can often make you lose team fights or even lose rounds. Pay attention to any focus fires, damage calls, and any other important calls your teammates are making. Correctly positioning yourself on the map is another crucial step in assuring that you win a team fight. Correct positioning depends on two things, high ground and your teammates. Finding high ground is an extremely important habit that all scout mains should have. Being on the high ground forces your opponents to either challenge you directly or by shifting spam up there to get you off. Another thing about positioning is being aware of the location of your teammates. You never want to isolate yourself from the rest of your team because you can easily get focus fired and your teammates will not be there to support you. Here is an example of this scenario playing out. My team and I decide to uber exchange back into the snake water middle. I make sure to block the point so that Bandy can spawn and end the uber on high ground. The other team's scout makes the mistake of isolating himself away from the rest of his team and we quickly focus fire him down. Now my team has a numbers advantage along with high ground. I'm able to kill a soldier who rocket jumped into my face and the rest of my teammates kill the remaining players. Another thing that I see a lot of lower level flank players do is not valuing their life on flank. Yes, most of the time you are dying for your team, but if you have the opportunity to live after getting a kill, then do it. Especially when that kill is super valuable like a medic or demo. However, if your teammate or you end up killing a soldier or scout, then it might be okay to get greedy and look for more opportunities. I'm a firm believer that a flank scout should have the least amount of deaths possible. Here's a scenario where Patty and I are sacking to try and force the other team's medic. I get into a 1v1 with the soldier near point while Patty ends up dropping their medic. As soon as their med died, I immediately ran out and reconnected with my combo for the push back into second. Now let's move on to off-classing. Off-classing is a powerful tool that can help break stalemates, defend last pushes, and force ubers early. With that being said, do not overdo it. Scout is already the most powerful class in the game, so only off-class when it's appropriate to. The three classes that I like to play on Flying Scout are Sniper, Pyro, and Heavy. I sometimes like to play Sniper during stalemates because I can play the game at my pace and work angles until I get a pick. Even if I'm unable to get a pick, my presence on Sniper forces teams to play in certain positions that could give my soldiers an opportunity to bomb in. Another thing that I like to do is Snipe in the forward spawn. This is an easy way to get a kill or force while still being able to switch back to scout. I really only ever walk out of the forward spawn if the map is big like process or if it has really good sniper sightlines. Power is another good off class to go to when defending last, particularly if the last has small choke points like metalworks and gully wash. It's super important for your soldiers to be spotting where the other team's combo is so you can rotate accordingly. Combine the power's air blast along with spam from your demo man and you can often shut a team's uber down. Heavy is another tool in your arsenal when defending last. You can off class to him when you're defending large last points where you can easily kite to the other side. Something that I like to do when defending last is to start off by sniping in spawn to force or get an early pick and immediately switching to heavy. I like playing near the spawn of heavy so I can make sure I don't die. Heavy is good because of his high health and ability to mow down people up close. Being good at mids is a valuable asset for any team because it gives you guys more opportunity to push rather than defend. 
On a flank scout, there are two ways of approaching mid, fast and slow. On faster paced mids, your team is the one initiating the fight first. Your main objective on flank scout during this is to support your soldier bombs and kill any players who are distracted by their bombs. Make sure you're buffed as close to 185 as possible before trying to push. Quick note, it doesn't really matter who initiates the aggression first as long as your entire team is on the same page. On slower mids, the other team will be the ones to initiate the aggression first. I like to start off my mid dodging any upcoming spam and making sure I get a nice buff from skis. My main goal of slow mids is to help Habib deny the other team from pushing the point and shooting us in the back. The only time I really ever help shoot bombing soldiers is if they land on my face or if I can kill them quickly. For the most part, you should trust your combo scout to kill them. For my final topic, I want to talk about aiming and practicing. You can make all the right decisions and still come up short if you don't hit your shots. This is why you need to have good aim. And the only way to get good aim is to just practice. First, find a sensitivity and sitting position that is comfortable to you and start practicing. People have different methods of practicing, whether it be MG, bot maps, death matching, pubbing, or pugging. It's all about what you think is best for you. I personally like to practice my aim by loading up a bot map such as TR walkway or MGing with my teammates. Overall, this was an extremely basic guide on how to play flank scout in sixes. I wish I could give you guys all the answers to being the best player possible, but most of this shit comes down to instinct and experience that you get when you play the game for as long as I have. The best way to learn is to play the game and ask yourself what you could be doing better. That or just watching Banny.